What's good, everybody? I'm Brian, aka the Black Packer, and today we're gonna talk about locks in the workplace. Now, I, this has been like a popular question um, over the years. Like people have been wondering, um, like, I want to start my dreadlocks, but I don't know what white people gonna think about me. <laughs> what corporate America is gonna think about me? So. Um, to answer that question, I mean, obviously you're not getting a job working at Taco Bell or something like that. Like you are talking about a job that you're actually going to care about. Most likely like you getting started in your career. And um, I'll just give you guys my experience over the years um, based off of the environments that I've been in. So um, to give a little background, um, I am a, currently a systems engineer um, at an airline. Uh, I've been working in IT for over a decade now, probably closer to 15 years um <clears throat> so i don't have like no bum job but i first started out in it i started out like doing help desk um like remote help desk and stuff like that um working for a real estate company um uh, so this is like what you know you guys know like when my dreads are like this long um when i first started there like that was definitely different because um you know i felt like a lot of y'all feel like very kind of like insecure about man what they thinking about me or do they think that my hair looks like shit because i think my hair looks like shit and you know all this other kind of stuff um i will say that with that job i wasn't like always always in people's face um so i didn't have that all of the time and you know being in it um, working like help desk stuff you have the opportunities to kind of like seclude yourself in closets every now and then and, and stuff like that like so I wasn't um, present where people could like analyze my hair all of the time like they see it in flashes and maybe ask like little small questions here and there but I didn't get you know too crazy of uh, reactions working for the real estate company um, when I moved to here to Seattle uh, I started working for a biotech company uh, and that was different because, um, I mean, I started working around like older doctors and like guys that's been, um, in the biotech industry for, you know, 20, 30 years and stuff like that. So like these old guys were looking at me, like with my dreads at this point, were probably about this long. So, um, I had a little bit of length on them. It was about closer, about two and a half years. So I couldn't quite put them in a ponytail yet, uh, but I was close to it. So um in that environment like again like i was in a cubicle a lot <clears throat> not really face to face with people all of the time and the people that i was face to face with they were people that i saw every day so you know, i felt like once they warmed up to me or you know just seeing me and stuff like that like that wasn't really a big issue um in terms of uh just getting into the space and just you know landing the job and stuff like that i didn't necessarily feel a lot of uh, push back, but I'll go into more detail about interviewing and stuff in a minute, but um, But my next job that I got after that uh, I started working for a consulting company so um, In that situation it was kind of similar like I, I just worked in the team environment So, you know the people that were on my team, you know knew me and that was cool like once You know I got on I didn't have too many troubles uh, that was uh, an, Again another dominated fully by um you know white people basically like i worked around a whole bunch of white people uh it was a couple black people uh that started getting peppered in after that <laughs> the funny thing about it is is that uh they hadn't hired anybody um on the team that was black uh when i had started i was the first one and after i got there they hired another guy with dreadlocks so I kept on telling everybody I must be doing a good job, you know, because y'all trusting us out here. So <laughs> I always let him know that. Uh, shout out to Imani. Um, but anyway, uh, after I left the consulting company, then I started working for the airline. And um, again, just a, a, you know, just giving you guys an example, like I of the type of uh, scenes that I've been in, uh, interacting with people that were, you know, secretaries all the way up to senior like c-level executives um and such like so <clears throat> obviously you know the big question through all of these type of types of venues that i've worked in uh is like what is the experience there what is it like um what i will say is that i haven't been met with direct discrimination i don't know if anybody else uh has or not in similar situations but in professional environments what i found is that 
white people tend to be a lot more passive aggressive so they're not gonna like come at you and just tell you like we're not gonna hire you because you're here or what the fuck is up with your hair or anything like that they're gonna be you know a lot more you know mysterious about it but it's just something that you just kind of have to feel through um intuitively you know to figure out like why are they asking me these questions like this or are they just curious or are they being discriminatory like you just kind of have to shuffle that out um also i'll say that um some people's prejudgment did exist like everybody that you know has seen dreadlocks you have to understand like what is their most um pop culture references that they have towards dreadlocks prior to them meeting you a lot of the times if they're older you know and haven't come face to face with people it'll be like somebody like bob marley or something like that or uh who had freeform dreads which is a lot different than you know maintain locks or two strand twists and all of this other kind of stuff that we kind of like um you know got creative with and uh dreadlocks lately but <clears throat> overall like their um their references are you know maybe musical artists or uh, football players or you know such like so they're obviously going to have dumbass questions every now and then. <laughs> uh, but even though they're dumb questions it doesn't mean that they're judging you harshly or wrong but sometimes their judgments can be wrong like they think sometimes that oh how often do you wash your hair and just really off top like that question already makes me mad because uh, black people don't wash their hair as frequently as white people anyway so with the addition of having dreadlocks and washing even a little bit less frequently than that, like even that, the true answer to that is gonna throw them away. So honestly, I don't even really answer that question. I'd be like, man, just as often as I need to wash it, when it gets dirty, I wash it and that's it. I just kind of leave it there, you know? So those are like the kind of answers that I give them when they you know, ask those questions. And <clears throat> um, you know, you just kind of fill that out and fill fill out who is being genuine and asking questions and who is trying to be manipulative or facetious or whatever the case may be. Um, you just got to do that. Um, I will say truthfully, as much as, you know, I want to say dreadlocks don't affect you in corporate America. Uh, nobody's, you know, you're not going to have any issues or anything like that. I'm going to just be real. Like, I've never seen a C-level executive with dreadlocks just facts like um i've never seen a director uh with dreadlocks um and that's me just even going back to even referencing how many black directors that i've seen in corporate america so that should just tell you like you know if you have aspirations of you know getting to c-level management or director level or all that other kind of stuff um you might run into some challenges uh, not because you're a bad person or anything like that, but I just think that right now within corporate America, the perception of people who fill those positions is very rigid because not only are they um, filled by, you know, white men, like they don't even have, you know, a lot of those positions for women or women of color or, you know, us. So you're definitely going to get some challenges there. But I will say that if you are um, looking towards getting to, I would say this 90% of y'all whatever y'all ceiling is in, in y'all head um, or where you think you can go with this 90 to 95% of y'all y'all gonna be able to do it with no problem there's only a certain amount of you guys that are <laughs> I think that are even outside of the box in that way to even kind of and that's I'm not even saying that in a negative way I might edit that out I don't know I'm not coming from a negative aspect when I say that it's just more like you know um, a, some people's perspective on going into uh, a career would be like, oh, you know, if I landed a job at Microsoft, man, like that shit would just be the greatest thing ever. And you could totally do that with, with locks in your hair. Uh, but to me, you know, and other people who kind of know what I'm talking about, the 5% of people are just like, why would I even work for anybody in the first place? And that's more of my own personal view. So, and I will say that, let's, that, kind of segues into after coming through all of these jobs and experiences and dealing with white people, uh, you know, asking questions about my locks and just all of that. Um, what my view is right now is that if I, if I had the choice, I wouldn't do that. Like I would say this, like if you are a 17 year old kid right now watching this video, 
uh, wondering like, or your mom is asking you like, why you want to grow dreadlocks? Like you ain't gonna be able to get a job and this, that, and another. I would answer them and even answer if you're you're asking these questions yourself. Why do I want to get a job? See, you've already identified that there is a um, a core belief within you or a core feeling that resonates within you um, and how you relate to yourself externally how you want to do that and externally you're not going to be free enough to do that and w or think that you're free enough to do that in whatever aspect why subject yourself to that you guys that are young that are getting dreadlocks i would just venture to tell you that um why don't you just be your own boss where you can wear dreadlocks that look whatever way that you want them to look every damn day and you don't have to answer to anybody. That's what I would say. That's what I'm working towards. I've been fortunate enough to be in a position where, um, you know, I've kind of went through that whole corporate ladder a little bit, but I would be lying to say uh, that there's a deep wanting uh, within myself that just wants to exit the whole damn game and just work for myself. So <clears throat> that's really what I'm trying to do right now, <laughs> uh, to be totally honest with you. So, <clears throat> um, but anyway, uh, while I was in it, I still want to give you guys as much information as I can about, you know, corporate America. Uh, I will say that um, when you're in it and you, you reserve yourself to say, hey, I am going to go through this process. I am going to engage in corporate America for whatever extent that I have to, to get what I need before I exit, or maybe that's something that you just want to do. Um, I will say things to be mindful of when you do have dreads that w will help you. Um, not only personally, just kind of be more comfortable like when you're going into these interview situations or uh, talking to people is that <clears throat> um, you have to use or what I've done is use me having dreadlocks as like a mental advantage. Like I already feel like um, by people uh, seeing me, they're going to see black man dreadlocks, the bar in their head is going to go down like oh this guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about like how did he get through the interview cycles or whatever the case may be so i come in with feeling like that's what their preposition is like their predisposition is to me and then i'm like blowing that shit out the water like i come into interviews just emitting a whole different energy like i always felt like no matter what happen like this resume can say whatever the resume said all I need is to get in front of you and if I got in front of you I felt like my energy the way that I resonated the way that I explained uh, what I thought what I know my intellect would just automatically just be speaking for itself to where the person would be confronted with a decision like man like we were not expecting that you know I always felt like you know everybody else that they interviewed looked like everybody else when they interviewed me I'm my own self like I'm the most unique person that they ever met that's how i feel and that's what i project and that's probably why it's got me where i'm at so if you're trying to do something similar then um that would be my advice to you um also just through the phases obviously you know each stage of having dreadlocks is different you can tell that by um, my video so starting out with one inch dreadlocks um going up to you know I don't know, shoulder length is going to be different than going through a ponytail phase and stuff like that. So the styles that um, helped me down, I guess, through going through all of these processes um, is in the beginning, I just had the small dreads, obviously. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, but after that, um, once my dreads start getting a little bit longer, I start putting them in a headband. And that way, the dreads wasn't like in my face, like like over my head forehead right here and stuff like that just looking like a mop so i just preferred to have it out of my face a little bit more so i had the headband and once my hair got long enough out of the headband then i transitioned into ponytails uh once i got and that was about the three year mark after the ponytails i just wore ponytails every damn day like every day i didn't wear my hair down at all and uh that was probably, you know, a good thing because in a sense because it's easy, but it's a bad thing because I think that I definitely thinned out some locks by doing that. Um, I had to merge a couple and all that other kind of stuff. But uh, but generally speaking, I just wore a ponytail. And um, once my ponytail got too long to where I start, you know, it started being annoying to like whip that shit around. Then um, I had started doing like the bun or the messy bun where it's like up, oh, but here, like actually because it's getting on my nerves right now so i can just do this but 
I would just do a version of like this little messy bun like this and just rock that. So uh, that's been pretty much my go-to every day when I go to work now is just a messy bun or a ponytail if, you know, I want to rock it that way. But anyway, I hope that this video was helpful to y'all. Uh, if you got any questions, make sure you drop them below. Click that like, click that notification button for the next video that comes out. And um, I'll holler at y'all next time.